Good morning, Pelham Road. Let's have a good day today. Got a lot to get to, so I'm gonna move kind of quick. In the comment section below, this is not a day about travel. This is an entirely different question, but I would like you to give me some input. All right, here's the question. What is something that you know now that you wish you had known at 18? Something you know now that if you could tell yourself at 18 and you could know it, you would want to know it. Put that in the comment section below. Ah, I think we have another candidate for um, our theme song we're going to debut today. Hopefully Facebook will let this one get through too. Let's see. I think you might know this one. You know this one? Well, now that was 1967. A lot of interesting music came out in 1967. Two of the four songs we've used this week came from 1967. And I know it's a protest song uh, from Buffalo Springfield. And it, it does sound odd saying that it's a, we know it's a protest song. Have you ever seen Buffalo Springfield? I mean, I think, I think if they're, in some cases, they look like a 60s band. But there are times where they look like a 1980s sort of country band. I mean, they're all wearing cowboy hats. So it's kind of hard to determine who they are sometimes. But anyway, uh, I love the song. Very interesting. All right. Well, now we are at our final day of wrestling with Ecclesiastes and the wisdom writer of chapter three. As I have directed our attention this week to the wisdom of this passage, uh, I am concluding with two uh, thoughts. The first is the secret of life is knowing what time it is. What time is it right now in the summer of 2020? We've got this summer right now. Sometimes it's time to hold on. Sometimes it's time to push away. Sometimes it's time to speak up. Sometimes it's time to listen. Sometimes it's time to do this or do that. You and I, that's the burden we got to figure out what this time is, what now is for. Sometimes it feels to me as if most of us are using this now just like we're treading water. Just like we're treading water, waiting on something. Playing a little bit of a waiting game. Kind of feels to me somewhat like being 15. Do you remember 15? One year away from that car. We're just one year away from that car. And so when you're 15, you're just trying to get through, believing that that car equals freedom. And then, you know, we turn 16. And in order to drive the car, we need gas. And so to get gas, uh, you got to have, uh, what do they call that? You got to have money. And then to get money, uh, they usually require you to do something called, uh, yeah, that's right. They call it work. And so now you get out of school and you go to work and you work till seven o'clock at night. And then uh, you work maybe 10 to 5 on Saturdays and you put in maybe 24, 25 hours a week at this place and you're working and you're getting gas in the car. You absolutely got gas in the car. You actually, you got more than gas in the car. You got money to do some other things with. But here's the thing. When you get off of work at night, you got to go home because you got that homework to do. And then when you get to Saturday and you happen to be at work and your friends are out playing. And then when you get off of work, maybe your friends are at work. And so there you go. I mean, as it turns out, 16 wasn't as fascinating and as important as you thought it would be. It didn't lead to freedom. It didn't give you what you expected. And here's the worst thing about it. Since 16 didn't deliver, you wasted 15. You can't go back to 15 and enjoy it because you wasted it waiting, treading water all through the day to get to 16. And that's kind of what it feels like today is we're all just out here kind of treading water, waiting on something. But here it is. A vaccine is not going to fix our joy problem or our fear problem. Getting the COVID under control is not going to make social unrest disappear. Having a vaccine for COVID is not going to create more justice. It's not going to put money back in people's pockets who got unemployed. So if the future is only that, just the future, and it's not a fix-all for all of our maladies, 
we better use the now really good. The now is valuable. It's never coming back. Which brings me to my second point. Don't waste now. <laughs> Don't waste now. What follows are two enlightening quotes about the present. The first is from a poet named Kaman Koji. If today is not your day, then be happy, for this day will never return. And if today is your day, <clears throat> then be happy, for this day shall never return. <laughs> Poets have a way of putting it, don't they? Today, Thursday, is another day. It's another day in a divided country, another day facing a virus without mercy, another day raising kids, and another day married to you-know-who, and another day trying to meet all the bills. Her point is, this day is not returning. If it's good, it won't be back tomorrow. And if it's bad, it won't be back tomorrow. And either way, it's a time to celebrate. You got today to do something. You got it. It's a cause to celebrate. So laugh a little bit and pour yourself some wine. Well, hold on. It's kind of early for wine. If you're watching this in the morning, maybe don't pour the wine this early, okay? But uh, the final quote comes from a, a kind of a rebel priest. Uh, we are living in a culture entirely hypnotized by the illusion of time, in which the so-called present moment is felt as nothing but a hairline in between the all-powerful past and the absolutely absorbing, important future. We have shrunk the present. Our consciousness is almost always completely occupied with memory and expectations. We do not realize that there never was, is, nor will be any other experience other than the present. We are therefore out of touch with reality. We confuse the world as talked about, described, and measured with the world that actually is. That's Alan Wilson Watts. I mean, Alan comes really close to intersecting the writer of Ecclesiastes. It's time to do something in the present. It's on us to determine how to use the now. What do you need to use the now for? Parenting those children? Gardening? Enrolling the kids in school? There is something that has to be done in the now. There is an opportune time to do things, a right time for everything under the earth. It is just our responsibility to figure out what this time is for. There's a time to birth, there's a time for death, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, another time to heal, a time to destroy, a time to construct, a right time to cry and another time to laugh, a time to lament and a time to cheer. There's a time to make love and another time to abstain, a right to embrace and another time to part from embracing. There is a time to shut up and another time to speak up. There is a right time to love and another time to hate. A right time to wage war and another to make peace. God has put it upon our shoulders and given us the wisdom to figure it out. We must determine what now is for. And it's never too late to do the right thing. Have a great day.